Yay! Yay! What is up, everyone? Welcome to episode 345 of Ginger Runner Live. Uh, tonight's a very special, special edition. We are joined by two guests. And it's Tuesday. And it's Tuesday. <laughs> Did I say Monday? Oh, I don't know. Did I already kick this off perfectly? <laughs> uh, tonight, Caitlin Gerben and Dylan Bowman are joining us on tonight's episode. Uh, we're going to talk all about Summer of Wonder. There are two FKTs that occurred in August of 2020. Uh, the film that just dropped on this channel, we just premiered the director's cut of that movie. We're going to talk a bit about that, uh, but we're going to talk more about just them setting these new standards in the sport and what last summer was like with those FKTs on the Wonderland Trail. So I'm very excited to welcome both Caitlin Gerben and Dylan Bowman to the show tonight. Sit back, relax. The show begins now. Ginger Runner. Yay! Yay! What is up, everyone? Welcome to Ginger Runner Live, episode number three hundred and forty-five. We appreciate you taking some busy, taking some, some time, busy time. Some we appreciate you taking some busy time. <laughs> uh, we appreciate you taking some time out of your busy Tuesdays to spend a little bit of it with us tonight on the show. Uh, yes, I said Tuesday uh, yesterday. We were gonna go live with Caitlin and Dylan. We were gonna premiere Summer of Wonder. We, we had all this planned, and then YouTube just decided to like not. Yeah not do anything that we needed it to do. So the movie just wasn't, it was set to premiere and it just wasn't processing on YouTube's end yesterday. Chaos ensued. We moved it to today and we're so excited. Someone's already commented on how much more relaxed you seem today. You have no idea. <laughs> the last 30 minutes. Oh, I do. Uh, Kim, <laughs> the last 30 minutes have been both just like, ah, and ah. Uh. So expect a very relaxed Ginger Runner on Ginger Runner Live tonight. Uh, I will also be partaking in some delicious uh, beer as a celebratory drink tonight. So I'm really excited about that. Our guests on tonight's Ginger Runner Live are the stars of Summer of Wonder, Caitlin Gerben and Dylan Bowman. I'm excited to have both of them join us. It's uh, it's just so nice to have one of them as a guest. We've had Caitlin on, we've had Dylan on, but to have them both is is an honor. And especially being able to reschedule them from last night. They were super flexible in coming back tonight to do the show. So from the bottom of my heart, I'm thankful to both Caitlin and Dylan. Uh, before we introduce our wonderful guests and get right on in and answer all of your questions, uh, it is not just myself and our guest, Kim. Hi. What's up? Hi, everyone. Kim Tashima Newberry here. Uh, welcome. If you're new to the show, welcome. Some, some people may have watched the premiere and now they've found themselves here for the first time. We are going to be uh, bringing Caitlin and Dylan on live. So if you have questions for either of them, both of them, just pop them into the chat room. We already have some Taco Tuesday questions. Classic. Potentially coming from Caitlin's husband. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it is Tuesday. There might be tacos happening somewhere. Um but yes, uh, so we are live. We're going to be live with Caitlin and Dylan for the next uh, 45 uh, minutes or so. And if you have questions about the movie, about the FKTs, about anything going on in their lives, please drop them into the chat. Kim will pull them aside. <laughs> about anything going on in their lives. Anything. <laughs> I mean, Taco Tuesday questions. Uh, it's to be expected. Uh, uh, also, we have some individuals that we'd like to thank at the top of every Ginger Runner Live. And those are our Patreon sub sub uh, supporters. We call them the GR crew. It, it is because of them that we're able to do these live shows that we were able to premiere the movie you just saw. Uh, it, we are so thankful to have such an incredible community of individuals from around the world. Um, two individuals in particular at that top tier. Rick Bjarnison is a Canadian ultra runner. He's currently training for some big stuff coming up this summer, uh, some DIY projects and, and, the, and the like. Uh, he also owns a web design and web maintenance company called CheekyMonkeyMedia.ca. They designed and are supporting the GingerRunner.com website. So if you want to check out some of their work, you can go there to check that out. And Brian Sands. Brian Sands has been a longtime supporter of us here at Ginger Runner Live and uh, Ginger Runner in general. So big shout out to Brian. He is in a, he's an incredible inspiration to this community and to so many individuals uh, in his weight loss journey, in his running journey. He's currently training for a 200 plus mile adventure. And uh, we're happy to support him and follow him. Um, so shout out to both Rick and Brian. Thank you both so much. Now, without further ado, we're testing some new tech tonight. It's the first time I've been able to sort of do what we're about to show you. And based on how well yesterday went, it's gonna be I'm perfect. sure it'll be fine. It's going to be perfect. <laughs> uh, I'm so honored to welcome the stars of Summer of Wonder, Caitlin Gerben and Dylan Bowman. Yay. Yay. Hello. Oh, let me unmute them. <laughs> Classic me. Hi, guys. What's up? So, 
Caitlin, where are you coming to us from? Where Where are you live streaming to us from? I'm calling from home in Issaquah, Washington. Not too and far Dylan, from you guys. You're not too <laughs> far. Dylan, where are you come from? I'm broadcasting from an undisclosed location in Northern California. But what I will tell everybody is that I'm sitting within, I would say, eight feet of a bronze Cougar Trophy representative of a victorious uh, Western States 100 champion uh, who shall not be named, but who could probably be guessed. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm just kidding. It's our uh, North Face teammate, Stephanie, uh, Stephanie Howe. Um, we're dog sitting for her and her partner, Jorge Maravilla, here in Northern California. So I've got plenty of inspiration by staring at Stephanie's uh, first place Western States 100 trophy from 2014. Man, we could have played up the next hour of just where is <laughs> where Dylan? Is Dylan? <laughs> He's in the presence of yeah. a cougar. Like, what is it? Uh, that's that's fantastic. I'm so thankful to have you uh, both join us tonight. So I think where I want to start is just sort of your draw. Uh, we'll start with Caitlin and, and then we'll we'll ask you, Dylan. But I'm super curious with the draw to the Wonderland FKT specifically. There's been a ton of movement in the last year on a number of FKTs around the country, around the world, uh, just with the pandemic and with so much uh, in the racing world being canceled or postponed. I- I'm just really curious why the Wonderland Trail? What is it about that specific uh, uh, accomplishment drew you both to it. So Caitlin, let's, let's start with you. Yeah. I mean, I live, um, within sight distance of Rainier. So like it, it feels like my home trail. Like it feels like if I'm going to go and, and put my effort somewhere, um, Mount Rainier is a perfect place to do that. And I've also like, I've been in Seattle now. I moved out here from the Midwest, but I've been in Seattle for a little over 10 years, I think. And, I mean, there's just so many days when the mountain is out. That's like a phrase that people use out here, right? So like looking and seeing Mount Rainier um, and just like have like, I mean, I guess when I climbed it the first time and you see the mountain then afterwards from the city, I'm like, whoa, is on top of that. Like that, like that feeling like never goes away. And so I've been staring at Mount Rainier and thinking about I wanted to run fast around it for a long time. So it just, you know, finally had the space and time in my calendar to make it happen this last year. Had you wanted to do it for a while, like for a couple of years, was it something you knew you were going to do at some point or is it purely based off the opportunity and just how things sort of presented themselves? No, I, I knew I was going to go for the FKT at some point. I just didn't know when it would be. Um, and I'd been thinking about doing the Wonderland trail itself, like either like first it started before I was even a runner really. I was like back, wanted to backpack it. Then I started trail running. I thought maybe I'd run it in three, in three days. There's a lot of runners who will do that. Um, then I did the Wonderland trail with, as part of the infinity loop last year, which I was on your show talking about too. Um, and so, yeah, I I mean, I guess my, my time mark has always kind of gradually shifted faster and faster over the last 10 years, but I've, I've had a, you know, longstanding fascination with just going after that trail. Dylan, I'm I'm super curious with you too because uh, I mean you're a new Northwest resident. I I know that you normally reside in Portland. Uh, I I was going to say not necessarily in the presence <laughs> of a cougar, but maybe someday. Uh, who knows? <laughs> uh, cougar trophy. Um, I'm curious your draw to Mount Rainier and the Wonderland Trail because you've dabbled in FKTs here in the Northwest over the last couple of years. So what was yeah. it specific about Rainier? Yeah, well, you know, I've been in the sport much longer than than Caitlin has and coming up, um, you know, in sort of like 2008, 2009 time frame, I was hugely influenced by the guys, the young guys who were in the sport at that time, like Anton Krupichka, Kyle Skaggs, Joe Grant, people like that. And Kyle Skaggs specifically, um, for those who haven't been in the sport for a long time. He was sort of like a young phenom in the sport who did a lot of amazing things sort of like in the 2006, 2009 timeframe and including he broke the course record at hard rock, uh, which has subsequently been broken again by Killian Jornet. Uh, but he also broke the wonderland trail record or set the wonderland trail record. I think it was back in like 2008, maybe, And that was the first time that I ever sort of learned about the trail, but I knew about the mountain because my dad uh, summited the mountain probably 15 or 20 years ago now. Mm -hmm. And 
to this day, it's still, you know, the proudest sporting achievement of his life. He still kind of brags about it. And so, you know, through my dad, I, I sort of had this sort of like, I don't know, affinity for the mountain just through osmosis. And uh, again, yeah, moving to the Northwest, being just a couple of hours away and having the whole race season canceled, it became the natural goal for the year. And uh, yeah, it was a uh, it was an amazing experience. Glad I got to get around the mountain. I there's definitely a couple of things I want to uh, touch on. We'll we'll get to some of the live questions here um, after this second year. I'm curious in regards to the standards that had been set before you both showed up uh, to the Wonderland in August. I mean, we're talking Jen Shelton's time is bonkers. Uh, Kyle Skaggs's time, Gary Robbins' time, Ryan Gelfie's time all bonkers and Caitlin in the movie, you sort of mentioned there's been a lot of movement on the guy's side, you know, over the last 10 years since Kyle Skaggs and I think 2008, uh, there's been so much movement on the guy's side. It's been very little since Jen Shelton's time. So for let's kind of get both your takes on that in regards to the standards that were set. Did that help inspire you or it, it, is it one of those things where you don't think about it? Like you try not to think about the times that are established. You try to think about just your own performance. I'm kind of curious about that relationship with it. Caitlin, let's, let's go ahead and start with you. Yeah. I mean, I was definitely inspired by, by all the times that were set, both the men's and the women's times. Um, and I want to acknowledge that there's definitely been a lot of really badass women who have gone after times, both unsupported and supported. Um, and, you know, of course, not all of those efforts are always successful, so they don't make it on the board. But um, worth mentioning, there's definitely a lot of um, people going after those times. But, I mean, I remember when Jen Shelton set the record. I was, you know, Dylan mentioned he's been in the sport a lot longer than me. So at that time, um, I was really just getting my feet wet with, with the trails. And I just remember like being so inspired by seeing Jen's record and, you know, it's kind of been like that seed planted in the back of my head that like, okay, like I, I think I can go after that time. I, I know I can do it at some point. Um, and then, you know, prior to Dylan and then Tyler setting the record, I had my eyes on Ryan Gelfie's time. Um, and I actually had thought about it earlier in the year, both Dylan and I raced Trans Grand Canaria last March or February, March, um, right before everything kind of shut down. And I remember getting back from that race and I was just I was like thinking about Wonderland Trail because I was thinking like maybe races are going to be canceled. Um, and I pulled up Ryan Gelfie's splits and I was just mm -hmm. like comparing it to what I ran at Trans Grand Canaria just like a week before. And I like the seed was planted in my head. And I said to Ellie, my husband, I was like, am I totally crazy for thinking that I could do this? Um, and I did think like just that realization there was like, that was definitely motivation for me about like, you know, wanting to definitely try to go after Jen's time. But I also wanted to see how much digger, deeper I could dig and see what, what else I could do. It's something that this is really unique to that to month, uh, sorry, to the month of August, 2022, because it, it's, it's, it's mind blowing to me to, to, to know, Caitlin, that you were attempting to, to beat Delphi's time, which is the overall time, so you would potentially have the overall FKT. And within a very short amount of time, everything pretty much shifted. Uh, but Dylan, I do want to ask you that same sort of question in regards to, to the inspiration with the time and the connection to the time and, and Gelfie's time and, and that sort of thing. Let's go ahead and get to that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think, you know, Caitlin's answer to that question is revealing because I think it it takes that type of an attitude. It reveals you sort of why Caitlin was able to s absolutely smash, you know, the women's record is because she was thinking about it. It takes a different type of psychology to think, oh, you know, maybe I'll go for the overall record. And, you know, I think it, it takes, you know, sort of that champion's attitude to do really amazing things. So, so kudos to Caitlin on that. And for me, you know, I have personal relationships with, you know, Ryan Gelfie and Gary Robbins, both guys who I've known a long time and who I have a lot of respect for. Um, I don't know Kyle Skaggs personally, but like I said, he was sort of a hero of mine as I was coming up in the sport. Um, you know, back in those days, I was, you know, 22 years old. And in those days, it was very um unusual to be a 22 year old sort of like trying to be competitive as an ultra runner. It's become much more, I think, commonplace now. But, you know, I think just because of the fact that I had so much respect for, for Kyle and had personal relationships and a lot of respect for both Gary and Ryan, 
um, you know, it gave me, um, yeah, just like, you know, I definitely felt that the, the record was achievable. Um, I never really thought that, you know, it, there was going to be huge margins of time to take off. I was actually pretty surprised that it ended up going as fast as it did. And then ultimately was rebroken a few days later, even faster. And I think there's still mar some margin for error on, on the, on the record now, um, in the right conditions, but yeah, I guess I didn't go into it with, you know, any specific time goal in mind. I knew that the, the record was achievable and I did a practice lap around the mountain that sort of, um, I guess, uh, reinforced that feeling. Uh, but yeah, I, I just am not the type of runner that like sets time goals or looks at pacing and, and extrapolates, okay, I think it's going to take this amount of time. I usually have sort of a gut instinct more than like a math, a math instinct. I think that's revealing of, of my personality. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, just, just knew the record was achievable, was motivated to do it and, and gave it my best shot. Well, your best shot was an incredible <laughs> shot. Um, before we get to some of the live questions, just to kind of uh, reference how the FKT moved and this will reference a bit of Tyler Green's performance, which is again, bonkers. Uh, and Tyler Green, uh, shout out to him for also allowing us to use some of that footage of him finishing for the movie. Cause I think it, it's a part of the story that I didn't get to tell with the original version, with the director's cut, you get to sort of show how crazy these seven days were on that mountain. Um, but in regards to like Kyle Skaggs's record. And then when Gary set that new FKT, it was such a moment of, whoa, that uh, two hour besting of a time is just incredible. Uh, and then Ryan Galfi shaves off some minutes and Dylan Bowman comes along and shaves off another near 90 minutes from what is thought to be untouchable is just a testament to Dylan's ability and Caitlin's who's also going after Ryan Galfi's time, which was already is so established. Uh, let's get to some of these live questions and we'll, we'll start diving into those seven days. Yeah. So just speaking of time, uh, Deb in the chat room says question for Dylan, you were shown on camera saying you could run or that you thought you could run the route much faster. So are you, do you have any plans to go back in 2021? Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well get it out of the way right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, pro probably not. Uh, just being honest. I mean, I, I did the lap twice in three weeks, uh, once as a practice lap over three days and once, you know, giving it my best effort. Definitely, you know, was, was proud of the effort that I put forward, uh, on the day, given the conditions and given sort of like how I felt I did the best that I could definitely, you know, walk away. You know, I, I think I recall, and I don't know if you showed this in the film, but you know, you seen saying something to the effect of, Oh, that one's going to stand for a while. And me saying like, I'm not so sure about that. You know, like I just, I didn't feel like everything really clicked. Um, and you know, that being said, like, um, I would love to do the record again, but you know, I, I'd be lying if I said that there wasn't a, a little bit of like, um, you know, it was, I was pretty crushed by it, you know, physically, emotionally, you know, having the record taken five days later. And again, nothing but respect for Tyler. And it was nothing but great sportsmanship on his behalf. And I have nothing but, um, admiration for, for his effort, but, I'm not, yeah, not going to lie. I mean, I was completely smashed physically by the effort, but I was also like, I was just pretty, pretty distraught by it. But, um, you know, re recovered from that and ultimately felt um, like a, it was a really positive experience for me developing as an athlete. But um, I'd be surprised if I gave it another shot in the future, uh, you, know, if, you know, going for speed again. Um, but I would say it is one of the coolest trails in the world and I, I'd love to do it again, maybe as a three day tour. Yeah. Yeah. There's multiple moments. I think, <clears throat> I don't know if they make the, the final cut of the movie I actually forget, but there are multiple moments where Dylan references it feeling like UTMB, if not harder than UTMB because of certain sections that do things a bit differently than how UTMB feels. But I remember him he hearing you say that at the finish and me sitting there, just kind of going, Wow, that's I mean, that's a testament to just the quality and caliber of this route is that someone like Dylan, who's raced international across the globe, says something like that about it at the FKT. Caitlin, as well, has raced international, dominated the a lot of international races and seen technical mountain elevate, like seen it all. And it's still one of those trails that Caitlin, I'm assuming you love 
you've done it so many times now that I feel like you have to like it. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely love the trail. I would highly recommend that people make it on their bucket list at some point. Uh, more live questions. Uh, this one's for Caitlin, and this is from Rain. And Rain is six years old, going on seven, and might be one of your biggest fans. Oh my um, God. <laughs> uh, so she asked, How did you get started in running? And what kinds of things can I do now if I want to run around Rainier myself someday? Oh, that's so awesome. Um, yeah, actually, this reminds me of um, in the movie, uh, Yasin, who also has a young daughter, um, is just was saying that. Um, his daughter was, you know, watching this all kind of go down and um, in, inspired by that. So that means a lot. So thank you for your question, Rain. Um, I, you know, I always kind of played sports outside. And especially when I was like her age, I just spent a lot of time running around with my siblings, um, you know, running through the woods, climbing trees, getting outside, getting dirty, <laughs> catching frogs, <laughs> digging up worms, like, you know, all the things that <laughs> you can do outside that aren't aren't necessarily so pretty, but, um, yeah, so I didn't really start running like seriously until I was an adult, but I think there's so many ways that, um, kids and adults alike can just have fun with things. I think not putting a lot of pressure on anything, um, and just doing things that seem fun to you. Um, it doesn't have to be far. It doesn't have to be fast, but um, just finding ways to explore. And I think, it's really fun to see what you can do with your own feet, um, where that can take you, um, and just allowing yourself to have a little adventure, even if it's just in the backyard. It's I, Rain. Thank you so much for the question. Like this is one of and those. She did make it home. She was she was a little disappointed yesterday when things got pushed to today. I'm because sorry, Rain. That's on <laughs> she me. had something else. She's very busy. She had something else on her schedule for today, but she did make it home, and she is uh, her her dad's in the chat room right now. Cool. So. Excellent. Uh, well, Rain, your question also brings up another point that I think we all addressed, both Caitlin, Dylan, and myself, early on in the process of just how this movie would hopefully inspire the next generation of FKTs and how FKTs are, are, are a bit different than a race in the sense that when you set an FKT, it's an incredible accomplishment. It's also an accomplishment that they're in the back of your mind, I'm assuming I've only set 17 FKTs, so I can't <laughs> speak from too much experience. I'm imagining it's a it's a thing where you go, I did something pretty dang cool. It's cool to have an FKT. It's probably going to get broken someday. It's just a matter of who and when and how. Do you both have experiences with that? Dylan, specifically, those seven days were dramatic for the male FKT. We just kind of yeah, mentioned yeah. it. Did you anticipate that it would happen that quickly? Did you feel that pressure while you were running to 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 push so hard that you try to set the bar so high so i think the question i think the answers will be different for both of you but dylan we'll start with you just in regards to you know how is it setting an fkt versus winning a race that sort of thing and how did it affect you yeah well i think it sort of references a larger question how racing and fkts are different and this was my, my biggest learning experience from the Wonderland Trail FKT and subsequently recording a podcast with Tyler and learning from him and how he approached it differently than you would a race. And I have a ton of experience racing. You know, I've done probably, you know, 60 ultra marathons at this point and all over the world of all different distances of all different terrains. And, you know, I feel comfortable in competitive environments was always an athlete as a kid. And I think I, took the same approach to the FKT as I always have competition in a couple critical ways that um, I think ultimately may have contributed to uh, per performing well on the Wonderland Trail if it were a race, but not necessarily in an FKT context. And, and so one of the things that I think is super important is like picking the right day that you go on and, and with mm -hmm. retrospect, uh, I don't feel like I went on the, on the right day but, um, you know, again, it was like, yeah, just, yeah, no, I, I knew that Tyler was going to be going the next week. So it wasn't as if he waited for me to go and then went on a, on a better day or right. whatever. I think he had a pretty warm day as well, but you know, when you can game this game, the, um, or control what's controllable, I think it really does contribute to, to going faster. And then also like making a little bit more effort and getting some pacers, uh, people to run with me during the course 
of uh, the FKT attempt. Um, and and then the other thing that I thought Tyler was genius about was walking through the aid stations where I sort of stopped and sort of refueled, similar to sort of like what I do at a race. And so I, I think it's, uh, it's really interesting, um, the differences in, in how you approach. And I feel like I really learned a lot. And uh, hopefully, you know, the next uh, FKT that I go after, um, if I am successful, again, it'll last a little bit more than, uh, than five days. But yeah, again, like that's the wonderful thing about the sport is there's, there's so many different ways to do things and, uh, you really do have to know yourself really well and just performing well or being really fit doesn't necessarily mean great things are going to happen for you. You really do have to have the, the physical thing dialed, but then really have all your logistics dialed too. And so I definitely, you know, went as fast as I could that day. I knew Tyler was going to be going just a few days after me and that was a motivator. Um, and, uh, and then, yeah, you know, with some retrospect, I feel like I learned a lot about how I'll approach the next one through Tyler's example. And then subsequently Caitlin's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Oh man, all of, it just makes me like, man, I just want to go back to Rainier. I just want to go back to Wonderland. And I just want to like see, see someone crush You're it gonna again. You're going to go for it? I'm going to go yeah, for it. Okay. This is me calling my shot. <laughs> 17 days That's it took me to get around it. That's why you brought us all here together. Yeah. <laughs> it's only going to take me a while. Caitlin, same question for you. Yeah. Well, I'll just maybe add a few comments that of things I think are interesting from what Dylan said. Like, You know, I also learned a lot from being there and watching Dylan's experience and how he handled stuff that day. And also then like afterwards, just watching him come back after, you know, he described himself as being pretty heartbroken. And it's just so awesome to see. And I think it takes a really good human to be able to to get picked back up and get yourself out there to help someone else. So I appreciate that. Um, But, you know, after Dylan's attempt, you know, we spent a good amount of time chatting about like he recapped different parts of the course for me, recapped the feedback, like he just mentioned, like wanting to have pacers. Um, So that was something that I changed. Like I was planning to run with some pacers, but I also had a, you know, a pretty big chunk of the route that I was planning to run solo. Um, And after hearing that feedback from him, I decided to recruit another person to help help run with me. Um, and I think everyone just approaches it differently. Like there's different styles and I totally agree the differences in the races and FKTs. But when I was out there, like, you know, of course it was kind of in the back of my mind that Dylan's record just got broken and the like, same thing could happen to me. And it was really like the, like the time that we went after those records was really like one of the first weeks that the trail I think was really in enough shape. Like we had so much snow this year. Um, and you know, like there was, there was probably another good solid month left of window for people to come after it. Um, and with the continuation of more hundred mile races being canceled around that time, I just assumed that there would be a number of women going after the record after me. Um, and so I think like motivation wise, I, you know, that was in the back of my head, but also like when you're running and you're out there pushing, like you can really only do the best that you can. And so I was just trying to stay focused on, you know, what were my reasons for, for doing it? Like, you know, if I'm trying to set a new standard and trying to help encourage and inspire people, then like, if people go out there and break my time and like my time motivates them to run faster, like, isn't that what I'm saying I'm doing? So like, I should just embrace that and like do what I can. And I know it's like a lot easier for me to say this because I still have the record um, as opposed to Dylan, but I think like in the moment, you don't know that. So I I was just trying to use that experience to just be like, all right, like, why am I, what are my reasons for being here and why am I pushing? Um, And if I set the record and it goes away the next day, like, you know, that doesn't take away from the day. And I, I just was thinking about this so much when watching the director's cut with Dylan that like, you know, it doesn't matter. I like, I know it probably feels like it matters that his record was broken, but it still like doesn't take away from how awesome of a performance that was for Dylan and like how special that day was. And I think like hopefully people see that while watching the videos like, you know, you you and Tyler both ran like such impressive days. And of course, if like the dates were switched or something like, of course, you can always but like any race or any route or anything, you yeah. can always go back and have a different day or a different performance. Like no day is the same. So I just think like trying to not put so much pressure on the actual number and recognize that it's a whole experience um, can just help. Yeah. 
and it's sort of as an outsider looking in to to those seven days and who had a lens there sort of trying to document it and trying to tell that story and you know dylan's new section in the director's cut is was such a blast to edit and to piece together because it's so fluid and he's moving so fast and the challenge with it uh, was the fact that there's so little footage that was actually collected from Dylan's day that is with him in the midst of the trail. One, no pacers. So Dylan obviously ran with no pacers for a majority of that day. And two, he was moving so fast that there's so few humans that can actually keep up with him enough to hold a camera. And that's it's just one of those things that's like, that's a weird problem to have. I mean, it's a terrible <laughs> problem to have when you're trying to make a movie about something when you're like, well, no one can keep up with them. Um, but it's a unique thing now in the story that's like Dylan was moving so fast and moving so well on a day that was less than ideal uh, heat wise and stuff like that. But the fact that he set such an incredible standard in those circumstances and that standard, you know, again, changed five days later. is just sort of a testament to how those seven days were kind of historic in 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 Wonderland history and, and will always, I think, be told for a while. Uh, tons of live questions. Let's get to some of these as, as, as much as we can before we have to wrap up the main show here. Yeah, since we were just talking about having pacers, not having pacers, a question from Deb. Deb asks, question for both of you. We saw you both pace each other. Can you tell us how the other's pacing styles were? Kind, patient, mean, mm, pushy. Great How question. valuable was that to have each other at your FKT attempts? Who do you want to start with? Uh, let's start with Caitlin. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, let me go first. Go because okay. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I went first uh, on the trail and I think it'll be, uh, it'll make the story a little bit better because we, we paced each other for the same section. That's box Canyon to the finish, roughly the last 10 miles or so the last two and a half hours, probably. And, uh, I was feeling pretty rough when, when Caitlin picked me up and, um, I was complaining nonstop. Uh, my foot was hurting. I was, uh, yeah, hadn't really been eating anything for hours at that point and uh, was, yeah, definitely sort of starting to, uh, you know, be a little bit of a, a crybaby out there. And, uh, and Caitlin was amazing. <laughs> and, and yeah, like it, it was like really the only section where I had somebody cover uh, every step with me. And because Caitlin was so uh, great to have with me through that section, it was in retrospect, again, a, a validation of my feeling of like, man, it, I would have really helped to uh, put a little bit more effort into trying to get people um, to run with me through the course of the day. And, uh, and Caitlin was awesome. You know, she, cause she coached me up. She, uh, definitely, you know, made sure that I was taking care of myself, but then also she didn't have a lot of patience for my, uh, for my <laughs> complaining and, uh, diagnosed me with a condition called LBS and I'll allow her to tell you what that is. But, uh, ultimately Caitlin also encouraged me. I mean, because I was getting very close to the 17 hour barrier, you know, and of, of course the standing record was, um, somewhere in the neighborhood of 18 and a half hours, I guess. And so I was looking to go just under 17 hours and I rolled my ankle on the last downhill. And I said to Caitlin, you know, uh, you know, my ankles are already delicate. I can't push. Like, I just need to finish this up. I've got the record. Like, let's just, let's just finish it up in one piece. I don't want to take any risks. And then, yeah, as we're looking at our as, at our watches, it becomes increasingly clear that it, we're going to be, you know, a, you know, very close to the 17 hour barrier. And then the ankle starts to numb up again and we start pushing again. Uh, you know, thanks. Thanks to Caitlin's encouragement, I was able to, to go a little bit under 17 hours. So those last 10 miles were were pretty dramatic. Me being a big crybaby, rolling my ankle. And uh, and then ultimately having a sort of sprint finish to go under 17 hours. So it was it was super fun. Uh, <clears throat> briefly, before we get to Caitlin's story side of things, I am curious in regards to that, Dylan, choosing no pacers. You didn't have someone really chatting, chatting with you all day while you're out on the trail, uh, except for possibly camera people who are kind of following you from time to time. Was it a welcome join or like was it a yeah, Caitlin, 
I'll indulge you. You can come with me. Like I'm, I'm not going to be talkative or what was sort of the mindset? Was it like, yes, I need Caitlin or was it, man, I'm not going to be a very good sport. Yeah, totally. I mean, I I definitely needed, uh, kind of like a, uh, an energetic pick me up. It was great to have a little bit of company and I had already just like been hurt and just like low energy feeling Mm. pretty bad for several hours at that point. So it's always nice to sort of share that discomfort with, with somebody else. Um, and yeah, just sort of like, um, you know, this is again, the the difference between racing and FKTs. I think like in, in racing, I prefer to sort of be, to be solo. You know, I I just, I enjoy that uh, feeling. I I like being out in the mountains, uh, on my own. I, I like the feeling of just like having your headlamp and everything you need on your back. Um, and you know, sharing those, those last 10 miles with Caitlin, you know, was the exact, I mean, it was, it was so enjoyable and so helpful and sort of like, yeah, just kind of revealed that, um, you know, the friendship that we have and the teammate dynamic that we have, it was just like an amazing way to, um, to sort of execute, a, you know, a, a big goal of mine. And so in retrospect, I, I wish I had sort of like put a little bit more effort into that and, and shared it a little bit more rather than approaching it. Like I would UTMB where it's like, no, this is my thing. I'm going for it. Got it. Caitlin, I'm, I, I can't wait to hear this. <laughs> well, I, I can't, I have to add a little bit to Dylan too. Cause I just, <laughs> the pace, pacing him was so awesome. I mean, it was such a like cool experience. So um, just because like there's some clips of this in the video, which I think is kind of fun. So um, Dylan, like before you came in harmony, so Dylan's wife and I were kind of scheming, we were looking at the splits, doing like doing a bunch of math, trying to figure it out. And we're like, I think he can go 16 XX. And like, just that number was like, so mind boggling that once we realized it was possible, we're like, decided like okay that is my mission like secret mission we're getting Dylan in (laughs) under 17 so like the splits I'm writing on my arm are like this is what we need to be running um in the one they show the clip of Dylan of like when I say hey can you run eight minute miles on this and I think that was like right as we're descending it's dark it's you know there's some rock so it's not there's some sections that are pretty fast and others that get pretty rocky in there. And that was when you rode, rolled your ankle too. So it was like really down to the wire. And um, yeah, I think it's just like, that was probably one of the most intense pacing experiences I've ever had. And I don't think I could have done it for more than 10 miles, just even like keeping up with Dylan, <laughs> but then like doing that constant math and like, you know, trying to keep someone moving, who's complaining a lot. Um, you know, <laughs> it's like, it's, it's fun. And I think like, it just is a testament to like the, there are many ways to get, um, you know, many ways to be involved as an athlete in the sport and they don't always have to be like setting your own records to make it like a pretty special moment. Um, so for, for me, I mean, like I said, like Dylan came back, I think actually his first run after his record was pacing me. So that was a pretty bold move. <laughs> but, um, I mentioned this in the film, but yeah, I, like coming into box Canyon, um, up in the high area up above that, I had been running into some nausea and like having a bit of a hard time eating. Um, and so I was just really like hoping to turn that around and, you know, hoping I could like get good calories in when I saw my crew and then roll out and like Dylan and I can just like crush. And because we had run that section before, when I paced him the week before, we also ran that section together when we did the recon on the route. So that was actually our third time covering Mm -hmm. that section of the trail together. And, you know, so I think that definitely helped, especially as I was like, not feeling at my best. It's like, you know, it's pretty vulnerable in that kind of position, especially when I like have a really aggressive goal. And I can like, see that kind of slipping away as I was not able to keep moving forward. So having, um, you know, having a pacer there, I think was really important for me. And especially having Dylan there just made it all the more special because of that time we had spent on that section of the trail before like it was familiar it was familiar because I'd done it with Dylan um you know and he just I think did a good job giving me a little bit of like hard tough love to just keep moving but also recognizing that like look like you're you're moving you're still like let's just keep moving like you are way under the record like don't do anything stupid here right (laughs) like you know there's kind of a balance of like how much are you pushing versus like you don't want to push past a certain level where suddenly I like roll my ankle and then I'm on the side of the trail and can't move anymore. (laughs) Yeah. I was actually 
Go ahead, Dylan. Can sorry. I add something? Yeah. So, I mean, I think it, it just like was such a cool window into just like how freaking tough Caitlin is because you have, you know, my experience where I was like complaining the whole way through. Right. And, you know, then Caitlin, as you captured, uh, I guess I captured on a GoPro, Caitlin's like, you know, doubled over puking on the trail and it was like up to me to be like, listen, just stop and puke for a little bit, you know, like <laughs> by like three hours, you know, like there's there's no need to, you know, be like, uh, you know, ru- rushing through it. And clearly, like you're you're having some nausea. So just get it out and we'll just keep marching through it. But she's just like so freaking tough. And so it was my first run back from uh, first run back after my FKT attempt. And, uh, and of course, like I said, I was like super bummed, but man, it was so freaking awesome to cover those last 10 miles with Caitlin and to get to coach her through, uh, her nausea and, and ultimately be witness to one of the greatest, I think, ultra running, um, performances in, in recent memory. It was just freaking awesome. I was curious about how hard you pushed Caitlin in those sections, in those miles, because watch and now it was great as a as a, the director and editor to go through all the footage and like relive the entire day almost moment to moment and moment and like have to choose which moments don't make the final cut it was like a really difficult thing because there's so many things that we've referenced tonight that i'm like yeah there's a moment in on that day where caitlin says this or dylan says this but one thing that i was surprised to see was just how much you pushed dylan in those last few miles even uh, with Caitlin as your pacer, Caitlin's pushing you like, can you do eight minute miles? And you know, you're like, uh, like barely struggling. And all of a sudden you're like, can I run in front? Caitlin's like, yeah, go by me. And you get in front and you take off and hearing Caitlin like, whoa, <laughs> like, oh my God. But then also hearing how hard Caitlin is running, oh, pacing. <laughs> you know, trying to pace well, Dylan, but then the reverse. Because, I mean, to, to paint the picture, you know, we're both like just staring at our watches, you know, we've got our <laughs> headlamps on, we're checking our watches like every 10 seconds and we're just waiting until we can hear you guys to understand that you can see our headlamps that we're right. close enough. And so finally we heard you guys screaming in the night, like that we were close and, you know, we're approaching the finish line. And then of course, at that point, I had like, you know, two minutes to make it there or whatever. And so we had to, it's like, it's so freaking my style recently. It's like, you know, <laughs> I have to make it come down to the very last second and have a sprint finish. It's, I'm getting so sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> but what's crazy is like your sprint finish was, was, was to go sub 17. It was sort of this arbitrary, I mean, you had established yeah. just a great time, but going sub 17 is one of those, like, what the hell, uh, and so to yeah. see you push so much for, for something that is a set, not, I don't want to say arbitrary. It, we all get in that race mindset of like, you know, it might take me 14 hours to run a hundred K, but if I can get under 14, it's arbitrary. But the reality is like, how cool would it be to say 13, 59, 59 versus 14? Yeah. Like that does <laughs> something to you. And in your case, it did something. Yeah. And same with Caitlin, you know, but, like but 16 and change. Something. I ran 16 and change 16 and a little change. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Thrower in the chat said exactly that. Uh, yeah. and shout out to Ryan Thrower too, who was just out there taking photos and and fo- uh, and video and and such a huge asset to the whole project. And we'll get to that here in a little bit. Let's get to maybe a couple more live questions, and then we'll move into uh, the after show. There's been several questions about how your recovery went afterwards. How long did it take uh, both of you to recover after your your FKTs? Yeah, Caitlin, go ahead. Um, we'll start I'll with you. go. Yeah. So I actually um, spent about a month, maybe it was actually a little longer than that, um, out with my parents um, back back home. I um, had road tripped out there. And, and so I actually took basically that entire month off of running. I did a few easy hikes and was doing a little bit of biking. Um, but I just really was, I mean, it, I, that was a really hard effort for me and my body felt it. Um, and so I just, especially since I didn't have any races, in the fall, they wanted to make sure I really respected that and recovered. So yeah, and it was even like at least a month before I even felt like running again. Like it just, the idea of running wasn't exciting to me. So I just hung out <laughs> and chilled on the couch. <laughs> I remember you also doing a lot of like mountain biking and and kind of other sports, right? Like the months Not after that. Biking. 
Um, or uh, gravel, gravel biking. Ellie would be excited if I was doing that. Um, yeah, no, I was just um, doing a lot of like easy biking. And I love like that was back in the Midwest. And I love like cycling on, on Midwest country roads. Um, so that was kind of a nice, a nice break, change of pace. Sweet. This is actually don't? also this is also a good story from Caitlin's effort. Um, the day before, I think it was the day before Caitlin's effort, Ellie, uh, Caitlin's husband, called me or texted me, I can't remember anymore, and asked me if I would go to this bike shop in Portland and pick up a bicycle secretively to bring up to the Wonderland uh, because he had he had purchased Caitlin a, a gift probably to celebrate. Uh, her Wonderland achievement preemptively and also probably encourage her to take a little time off from running afterwards. So once uh, once I got up to uh, wherever it was, I think White River Campground, uh, we took the, the bike out of my truck and packed it in, in Ellie's car and, and Caitlin had a surprise uh, bicycle waiting for her after, after the awesome Wonderland. So that was a, a cool gift and a cool memory from the whole thing. But yeah, similar for me with uh, recovery, I, I'm really good, I think, at turning turning it off after big efforts like that. And uh, this was no different. And, um, you know, for those who, who follow me, they know that I've been working on something for a long time that, that basically is immediately after the Wonderland Trail. I uh, started really hammering on, on our new project called Pillars, which some people are probably familiar with uh, that we don't need to go into too much detail on, but yeah, it was really fun and it was great, you know, to just have like this different um, mental stimulus, professional stimulus to uh, really stretch me in a different way to make me think a little bit more creatively and to help me not really feel like I need to be an athlete, you know, instead focus on a different part of my life, uh, for a little while. I think that always contributes to, uh, recovering better. So, if, you know, for giving advice, I think that's a really, uh, like something that I took away from it that I'd like to do in the future after races is come up with something immediately after the race that has nothing to do with running mm. to devote my time and energy towards, because oftentimes you also have this feeling after you've like set a big goal and, and done it. And, you know, even if it goes really well, you can still have this sort of like almost let down for not having this goal to chase anymore. And so for me, it was really fun uh, immediately after Wonderland to totally turn the running part of my personality off and start working on this, on this new venture that uh, we launched, you know, at the end of the year. I uh, will actually be talking uh, I hope you're okay with that, Dylan, but more about that maybe in the after show because I'm fascinated by it. I think it's such a cool thing that uh, is really uh, innovating in the space and, and and pillars in case you are just catching up to pillars app, pillars podcast and all the, all the cool things that Dylan's been up to. Maybe get to one more live question and we are going to move into the after show. We're, mm -hmm. we're going to keep Dylan and, and Caitlin here just for a couple more minutes uh, in the after show for our GR crew. But um, Kim, what do we got? Yeah, question from Nicholas. Nicholas says, do you start the FKT run lighthearted or is your mindset in a strict focus from the get-go? Okay, let's go ahead and start with you. Um, I was feeling pretty nervous. I mean, I was excited, but I was nervous. And I think part of that came was because like I knew I set an aggressive goal for myself. And I, you know, of course, like the day would just happen. But I think also knowing that I had a number of people come out to take time out of their work week to come and help support me, I think just adds a little bit of like an extra like, oh, I don't want to just like go out there and then mess this up. Um, so I think like, yeah, I was I was pretty, pretty focused. But I think also it's just like just like a race setting once once the clock starts and you start moving, things just kind of click. Um, and yeah, so I guess a, a balance maybe of, of nervousness focused and, and then lightheartedness once I actually started moving. But you don't. Yeah, I would echo most of what Caitlin said. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, the, the hardest part about these things often is just like, you know, waiting to, to start. And then once you take the first dozen steps, you know, it, it, all the, the nerves sort of go away and it just becomes another day out in the mountains. But yeah, I think, you know, for something as big as the Wonderland Trail, it is important to sort of start lighthearted and that like, obviously you don't want to be in uh, kind of like a 
super stressed out race psychology the whole time. And also like, it's just the most spectacular freaking route ever. So if you, if you are in that type of a mindset, then, you know, you may, uh, miss miss all the scenery so yeah i think starting as lighthearted as possible is is probably a good strategy because eventually it's the miles do accumulate and the vertical does accumulate and the lightheartedness becomes a little bit more difficult to achieve i am so honored to have these two individuals join us tonight together on the show uh is this the first time the two of you have talked since since wonderland days no definitely not right no, 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 no. <laughs> no, I know they're friends. But uh, we haven't but, talked much about one about the week, right? Like, I mean, I guess that's true, right? Because have you done a podcast like together? Something. We've done like some North Face stuff, like that's sort of internal facing or media facing, but um, you know, occasional text back and forth. But yeah, this is super fun, fun to reminisce. I really appreciate it because I know it. I mean, it's a dramatic part of both of your memories from last year. It's it's a big portion of 2020's like highlights for me. Um, so I just really appreciate you being able to to take the time tonight. I mean, yesterday night and then tonight <laughs> to really sit down and, and kind of dig into it a little bit. Um, so our guests tonight, Caitlin Gerben, Dylan Bowman, they're going to stay on the line for just a few more minutes for our after show. If you'd like to join us, you can do so. All you got to do is go to patreon.com slash the ginger runner. You can join us for all of our after shows tonight. It's no exception. We'll ask as many questions as we can rapid fire. We'll try to get through as many as possible. But before we even move into that, I want to give them an opportunity to sort of talk about uh, things or p- places where you can find them on social media, where you can follow them and follow future projects and all that good stuff. Uh, we were just talking about it. So Dylan, uh, maybe you want to talk a little bit about pillars, but Dylan, where can people find you and follow you and, and continue to keep up? Yeah, lots of places. I mean, personally, social that I use is basically Instagram and Twitter mostly. I do also use Strava, but not crazy actively that, you know, I don't really interact that much or, or scroll that much, but I use it to log. You're doing train. a ton of dancing on TikTok though, right? I could have sworn <laughs> <laughs> you're big on TikTok. Yes. I turned 35 at the end of the month and I'm sort of like, maybe, uh, I don't know if TikTok is really my demo anymore. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then uh, with, with Pillars, you can find us on, on Instagram. You can visit our um, website, which is just pillars.com. And then, uh, yeah, the podcast as well uh, is under that umbrella too. If people are interested, we do a lot of fun convo about trail and ultra running too. And I think there's actually a really cool episode going up tomorrow. Um, so for those who are interested in, in more ultra, uh, centric banter, um, I like to do a lot of that. Dylan's conversation with Joe Grant is fantastic. Stephanie Case is fantastic. So yeah, definitely check out the pillars podcast, P Y L L A R S. Um, it's, well worth your time download the app there's some great video content yoga content running content it's great dylan you're revolutionizing stuff we'll we'll chat more about that in the after show uh caitlin what about you where can people find you uh follow you and see what's next yeah uh social media is similar to dylan mostly instagram so you can find me there and um, also strava um you can follow along my training and stuff if you want to um and I would love to give a real quick shout out to another interview I'm doing with a teammate tomorrow, actually, um, our teammate, Hillary Allen. Um, she's got a book coming out um, in a couple weeks. And so we're doing a live show where I'm going to try to play Ethan and Kim and interview and Dylan. You guys <laughs> nice. Are nice. Well, I don't. So I'm going to um, have my work cut out for me. But anyway, um, I'd love to see some of the GR crew um, attend that and, and be nice to see some familiar faces. Where can they find the link to that? Is that going to be on uh, your Instagram? Yeah, I'll, I'll share a link to it on my Instagram after this. Perfect. Uh, our guests tonight, Caitlin Gerben, Dylan Bowman, are the stars of the director's cut and the regular cut of Summer of Wonder, which is uh, my latest movie that just posted to this YouTube channel as well as the North Faces channel. Uh, the director's cut just went live about an hour ago, I hope, hour and a half ago. I hope you get a chance to go watch it. Uh, show it some love, but we're again, we're going to move right into our after show with both Caitlin and Dylan. We'll only hold them for a little bit of time. We'll try to get as many questions as possible mm-hmm. in that amount of time. I just wanted to take a quick second before we uh, announce our GR crew member of the week, but I just wanted to recognize some other individuals that really helped make this project come together. I'm probably going to forget a number of names, mm-hmm. uh, but they are in, I just, this was such an honor to document. This was 
as a creative person who's always trying to do something new and trying to like push what is possible both within myself and within the space creatively, this was an opportunity that challenged me and also really pushed me because of just, we, I had an incredible team that allowed this thing to happen. Uh, Ryan Thrower, who's just been a fantastic human being, um, who helped me out considerably throughout the whole process with filming and, and f- fantastic photography, uh, really, really stepped up. Yassine Daboon was a huge asset throughout this entire process. Uh, both Caitlin and Dylan's significant others were also huge in just making those days easy, being very organized and and allowed me to sort of just document with the camera and not worry about a lot of logistics. And of course, this individual right here to my right, Kimberly, is fantastic. And uh, I could not have completed this without you. Um, so thank you very much. Justin Sund is my partner in crime. He is a producer that has helped produce a lot of projects in the past. And this one was no exception. He put in countless hours of work in addition to Brittany Delf. So Brittany Delf is someone I haven't really chatted or talked about on Ginger Runner Live, except for in, in regards to the Wonderland stuff, but she is an editor and really helped bring this project to what it is now. Um, she came in and did countless hours of work in, in helping to sort of weave the story together from a perspective that, you know, it's really easy to shoot all this stuff, shoot all this footage, sit down and try to piece it together with a puzzle, but not really see the worth of everything. Like you get lost in the jumble of the puzzle. Brittany uh, uh, is a fantastic editor, fantastic storyteller. I'm so thankful to have her perspective uh, on this project and it would not be what it is without, without her talent. So huge shout out to those individuals. Am I forgetting someone? Cause I feel like I'm forgetting 10 people. Uh, Khaki and Rob, of course, at the North Face, they believed because of Caitlin and Dylan recommending me, North Face went, okay, we, we trust you two, so maybe we'll trust this guy. Uh, and they trusted me, and in the end, they turned out to like just be these incredible humans who trusted everything creatively, and it was such a cool process. Probably one of the best processes creatively I've ever had uh, in dealing with a client. So big shout out to the North Face and helping to make this thing possible. So we're going to wrap up the main show here. But before we do, of course, we have a segment on the show that we like to call our GR crew member of the week. Basically, we get to recognize a member of the community who went above and beyond, who did something spectacular over the last uh, week. And Kim, who is this week's GR crew member? So this week's GR crew member of the week is Eugene Day. Hey, cool. And Eugene just uh, nailed his first 10 miler in quite a long time. Um, so congratulations, Eugene. I know Eugene has also been tackling uh, some, some portions of the Tiger Claw course yep. recently. Yep, he's been hitting up Tiger Claw so course. That's very cool. So way to go with getting back out there. Nice job, Gene. And congratulations, congratulations to all of you who who not only ran incredible runs and filmed incredible things during a pandemic year. That was the extra layer of things that, you know, we haven't really talked about, but that added extra stress and and all that good stuff on top of it. I thought we did a so, fantastic job, yeah. all things considered. And we yeah. can chat a bit about that in the after show as well. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning into tonight's live show and for watching The Director's Cut. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Uh, again, a big thank you to our guests. We'll see you in the after show. Get out there, train hard, race harder, and party the hardest. I know I am. We'll see you guys next week for more. Good night. Bye. Ginger Rodgers.